John, it's another big night tomorrow night here against Hearts. Um, if we take care of business, then there's no need to worry about any other result. Does that give the game an added edge? Ah, I suppose it does, yeah. We know the guarantee is that if we take care of it, we win the game, then we finish second, and second's a big advantage. You know, you've only got four games to get to the Premiership rather than six, so it's two less games, it's two less games without picking up injuries, two less games without getting any red cards, suspensions. Uh, more time to prepare for the semi-final. You've got more time to prepare, which is obviously better because, uh, you know, you know, failing winning the game and Dundee winning the game, then we're obviously going to go straight into uh, third and fourth playoff, uh, playoff games. So there's such an advantage to finish second. And it's in our hands. It's in our hands to go and win the game. Yes, we're playing against Hearts, they're a very, very good side, they're league champions. And maybe just playing without any pressure now. Uh, and that may make them a more dangerous opposition. I appreciate some people will say they're nothing to play for, but I think Robbie will want to continue winning until the end of the season and, uh, you know, to get as many points on the board as possible. So, from our point of view, you know, exactly right. It's a, it's a Kenny Cup final, whereupon if we win the game, 100% second place, which will be, which will be a big, a big, you know, achievement for the football club to finish second in this league. There's so many big clubs in it. And for us to finish second would be a great statement and it would be a great uh, honour uh, to, to, to finish second to a team like Hearts, a massive football club like Hearts. Um, so it is what it is, we know, we know what we've got to do uh, and uh, we're preparing and planning to do that. Yeah. Dundee last Saturday there was very few chances for the goalkeeper to deal with from either side. You'll be planning on that being different, certainly from us shooting towards them. <laughs> Well, you know, we had a very entertaining game at Ten Castle, 4-3, uh, seven goals. Uh, Hearts came here with their tails up, a point to prove uh, within a matter of days. Uh, and of course, they, they won 4-0 on the night. So we have to make sure that we, we stay in the game. We don't want to be in a situation like we were the last game, whereupon we're here 2-0 down, down to 10 men at half-time. Uh, we've got to be in the game. So whether we win the game in the first minute or in the last minute, it's probably irrelevant. It'll be a night where, yeah, We'll need to play well. Jamie McDonald will need to have a great game in goals, probably. We'll need to defend well. We'll need to compete. We'll need to close them down. We'll need to make it difficult for them. And we've got to go and express ourselves. And we've got to try and create opportunities and, and get make them a little bit nervous, make their defenders a bit nervous, you know, create opportunities, try and get the ball past Craig Gordon, which we've done, obviously. Uh, so it'll take a whole team effort. And uh, that's how we've got here. We've got here with everyone, every single player in the whole squad, you know, playing their part from day one till now and hopefully for a few games more everyone backing each other staying together com competing for positions for each other but backing each other all the way and uh, that's the only way that you can be successful we've not relied on any one particular player uh, scoring the goals the goals have been spread out we don't have anyone anywhere near the top goal scorers chart so our goals have came from all over the team which is pleasing uh, and that'll be the same uh, over the next three games, hopefully going on to the next seven games. Yeah, it's certainly got the ingredients of an exciting game, you know, the 3-2 victory at Tynecastle and the midweek game after that, and both teams are capable of, of scoring goals. Uh, you mentioned recently in a podcast interview the need for a plan A, B, C and beyond, if necessary. Um, that need to be flexible is going to be really used and, and required during the playoffs, isn't it? Yeah, very much so, and no more so than this game here, you know, because... Uh, we have to have focus and we have to concentrate on the, on the game and that's very much for the staff and, and players. But we'll also, uh, you know, depending, you know, what's happening elsewhere, it may well be that we'll need to uh, either gamble a little or, or, or try to hold on to what we've got. It'll depend. And so we've got to be prepared and ready for that as well. So we do have and are planning and preparing for two or three sort of situations that could crop up during the night that we may have to, you know, put into action uh, during the game. Yeah, with regards to team selection, uh, obviously we know that Dylan Tate won't be available for this match and the first playoff game. Uh, and Keira McDonald seems to have made a, a good recovery from injury and played the full 90 up at Dens Park. Yeah, it was great to get Kieran back in, yeah. Uh, that was the plan. That's we, he didn't play at Aloha, we left him out at Aloha. He didn't play down in Dumfries against Queen of the South. Uh, so... The time scales we got were exactly that. We'd be back for the Dundee game, and uh, thankfully that's how it worked out. And uh, once again, he, uh, he was fit, played in the game, and he's uh, no reaction, so he, he's good to go.
Yeah, and, and it's worth noting as well that you know, in Kieran's absence, Dan Armstrong stepped in and did a, an excellent job in, you know, in a slightly more withdrawn defensive position for him. Yeah, he had to go and play left back, simple as. Yeah, uh, so it's great that Dan did that. He did it on probably a couple of occasions in uh, in League One uh, last year. I think remember dropping in even at. Uh, at Falkirk, if I can remember right, and he's played uh, out here and uh, maybe against Dunrar, I think. Uh, he, he put a great ball over the top for John Beard to go on and score a goal against Dunrar. Uh, so, yeah, he's done it on a couple of occasions and uh, thank Dan for, for going because not everyone would go and do that, you know. Uh, Frankie is the one who would have been in that position to have maybe, you know, slid across and, and go and play left back, but unfortunately, with Frankie being out. Uh, and out for the season, then it was, uh, it was the other option was done, and he went in and done a very good job on the day. Yeah, um, the season's still ongoing, but um, we recorded the Player of the Year awards earlier this week without giving anything away, uh, spoiling any surprises. It was great to see the players uh, being rewarded for all their efforts over the entire season. Yeah, once again, congratulations to all the winners. Uh, well done, very worthy winners. Without giving too much away, it was it was good that it was going across the board. It wasn't a particular individual that won everything, so that's a, a little hint. However, uh, thank you to all the committee that put it together, the Ray TV for their excellent uh, coverage throughout the season, and also on the, uh, and doing the Player of the Year awards. It was very very well done. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and yeah, and we're all going to enjoy watching that um, late next week when it's when it's published. Uh, finally, John. Um, just on the way here, I was thinking about um, the, the amazing the difference that three years makes. You know, May 2018, we were devastated to lose out to Alloa in playoffs. Now we're potentially a handful of games away from playing in two leagues higher than that. It's easy to forget how far we've come. You must be pleased with the progress that you've achieved in your time here. Yeah, pleased for everyone. Yeah, definitely pleased with the progress and where we are sitting right now and with the opportunity. And it is an opportunity, one maybe that we need to grasp with both hands. Because these opportunities may not come along, uh, you know, very often. So we're in there. We've got a chance. I think everyone's seen us play against Dunfermline and Dundee, and there's nothing in it. They will feel that they've got a chance. We believe we've got a chance. And then, you know, whoever comes out in top has got an opportunity to play against a, a Hamilton, a Ross County, a Kilmarnock. So, you know, we hope that we're the ones that are going to going to go and do that. But just as you said there, we're talking about Aloha and. and the width of a post, you know, and if you go back to that May, you're talking about when Louis Vaughan hits the post, and you look last Saturday or the Saturday before when we played Aloha, and they hit the post, and if you look at the two things, that then put Aloha down, you know, and on that particular day, the Rovers went down, you know, when Louis hit the post, so there you go, you know, it just kind of like the whole thing swung round again, you know, it's, uh, it's football, you know, it's football. So yeah, delighted for everyone connected, all the players that have been here previously, who have played their part, all the players that are here now, all the background staff, you know, Paul Smith, Darren's been a, a massive help, uh, Blair, the, the, the sports scientist, Simon, you know, is, does an amazing job with regards to the kit man and everything else that he does, Stuart Duff, our physio, Cammy Ross, uh, Andy Tunnell, the sport the uh, uh, analyst. Uh, hopefully, I've not missed anyone now. Uh, the, the, the birthday girl, Dr. Green. Yep, Katie Green has been amazing as well, especially you know in this time with the COVID and everything else that's been going around. So, yeah, for everyone that's put all the effort in, you know, hopefully the success we've had is just uh, ready to take another step forward. Great, thanks for that, John. Good luck for tomorrow night and good luck uh, thereafter. Thank you.